What's up guys? Today I'm going to be installing the Weller rear frame brace onto my YXZ. Uh, you may or may not know this YXZ has previously been rolled over. I actually bought it that way. I got a really good deal on it because it was crashed. Uh, most of the uh, damage was on the factory cage. That factory cage is weak anyway. Uh, I ended up buying this crash aftermarket cage, putting that on. Once I cut the factory cage off, the frame just kind of popped back into place and I slipped the uh, aftermarket cage on and it kind of brought the frame right back into place where it was from factory. And now the door's closed, plastics all fit up perfectly. Uh, the only thing left, I suspect maybe the rear frame is a little bit tweaked because the way this rolled over it hit the roof and then landed on the driver's rear tire. So I'm afraid that maybe that frame is just pushed in a little bit. You can't really tell looking at the wheel, it looks straight, but I wanted to install this to kind of make sure it's back to its factory position. This has the two holes that you can line up and it should be right back into the factory place. Uh, once I get this installed, I can start installing my raised car design gusset kit which is a huge box of metal gussets that you put all over the frame in the YXZ to strengthen it. So I can really, you know, bash on this thing without having to worry about the frame. I also got the shock relocation brackets, so my shocks are going to be at a better angle. So I'm excited to try those out, but I need to get the actual frame back in its original position before I start welding in any gussets. So uh, let's open this thing up and get it installed. So just a warning, you may or may not see my dogs throughout this video. Uh, we changed their dog food and now they're spewing lava all over so they can't be trusted in the house right now. Man, I just realized something and I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh, I was supposed to go on the twisted UTVs ride today, but I ended up taking my exhaust off and having it sent out to Jet Hot to get it uh, Jet Hot coated. And it hasn't come back yet, so I wasn't able to make the ride today. But I just realized I easily could have just taken this exhaust and put it on my other YXZ and went on the ride. Yeah. Oh, well. I guess I will uh, get more work done today then. <clears throat> All right. Let's get this thing opened up. Watch your nose, Bella. <laughs> Sticker. Heck yeah. Oh, instructions. That's nice. Yeah, hopefully I don't have to take a bunch of stuff out. I'm hoping to not have to take my diff out for this, but we'll see. <clears throat> Got some longer bolts because this is gonna make the uh, brackets a little bit wider. So we got longer bolts to go through those. Man, that is a nice bracket. That thing is thick. Heck yeah. All right, let's get it installed. Before I get that installed, I had a gift card. Went to Harbor Freight and I bought a bunch of stuff that I use up all the time. These aren't the best quality here, but they're good for temporary fixes. So yeah, I got these to weld in my gusset kit. I broke my magnet recently. This has got a little bit big of a head on it, but it was cheap. Got some flap discs. Got these discs, I've never tried them. I assume I'm gonna get shards of cut off wheel in my face. Uh, I lost a couple uh, Allen wrench sockets, so that really bothered me. So I bought a bunch more and some super glue. Nothing better than uh, just getting a bunch of stuff from Harbor Freight. All right, before we start taking things apart, I wanted to show you 
So right there is where I think maybe the frame has gotten pushed in. Like I said, the wheel, it doesn't look crooked or anything. It does have some dirt and scratches on the side, which makes me think that it did have some, you know, side load pushing into here. So I'm going to start trying to uh, disassemble so we can get that bracket on there. I don't know exactly how much stuff I'm going to have to take off. I'm going to try to do as little as possible, but this might get pretty in depth. I'm not sure. Okay, I'm going to start by taking off the rear section of the skid plate. There's a bolt there somewhere. There we go. Boy, that's dirty. All right, now I'm gonna jack it up. I'm gonna stay towards the rear of the machine, but try to get it centered between the wheels. All right, it's up in the air now. Now we can start getting in there. My uh, jack stands are a little small. They're Harbor Freight ones anyway, so it's uh, still not that safe. All right, I'm gonna take the bolt out of this lower control arm here. Uh, it's a 14 millimeter on this side, 19 on this side. It really sucks to try to get a socket into here, so I gotta use an open end wrench. Now that I got the nut off, I'm just going to back this bolt out. Ah, oh, it's hitting the frame. It's a bit of a pain. Yeah, the bolt touches the frame there. There we go. All right, I'm gonna do the same to this side now. Here we go. Now we gotta grind these gussets here on the bottom so that bracket will fit up in here. Uh, I'm gonna try to grind it so it still has a round on the inside, so it doesn't have a sharp corner where it can crack. So I'm going to grind out quite a bit here. There, I think that might be good enough for this one. I might come in and round that inside a little bit more, but that's about how much you have to take off of each one. All right, I had to go underneath because I didn't have much room in here. It would have been easier to take the tires off, but I'm really trying to see how little you have to do to get these installed. So nothing's better than overhead grinding or welding, getting those hot sparks in your ear, feeling them sizzle. It's a wonderful time.
let's get this rear brace mounted up. So I took off just enough material so this gusset matched this inner panel here. Oh wow, that fit right up. So I'm looking at the space in between here and here. There's a little bit less on this side. I'm just gonna tap it over a tiny bit. It looks like it's kind of hitting on the weld there, but I think I tapped it over enough so it looks about centered on the left side and centered on the right side. I mean, to me, it looks like the frame isn't bent at all. I actually, I got out my porta power thinking that I was gonna have to push the frame out, but I mean, it can't line up any better than that. All right, I guess I'll just throw the bolts in. I'm gonna check the spacing on my non-rect YXZ. See, I just thought that the bolts on the bottom of the diff look awful close to the frame. I'm gonna check my non-rect YXZ, just make sure that's similar. All right, here's my non-rect YXZ. So yeah, there is not very much room there. You definitely can't get a wrench on it, I mean a socket. You have to have like an open wrench or something. So yeah, looks like it's not even bent. Cool. Now that we know that the plate's gonna fit up, I'm gonna get as much dirt and dust off of here as I can and throw a little paint on it so it doesn't rust. I'm gonna throw some painter's tape on the areas that I don't wanna get paint on. This is all the painter's tape that I have left. I've bought like 80 rolls. We've been redoing the inside of the house. This stuff is criminally expensive. And my wife only buys the one inch strips, which sucks, but ideally you get the little bit wider painter's tape. The paint that I used is this Rust-Oleum, just the flat black. Once it dries, it matches pretty good with the paint. Once you get a little dust on it, you can't even tell. All right, let's throw it on there. Center it up. All right, I'm gonna throw these longer bolts in and then we'll get the nuts on. Those are nice. Hopefully they're not terrible to put in. The original bolts slide in really well, but the new bolts being that they're longer are kind of hard to get in. I guess I better put that washer on. <clears throat> Man, that's all the farther it wants to go. See, the, the bolt is just hitting the frame here, which is kind of putting at a bad angle. And it needs to go in just a little bit more. I really don't want to smack on it, and I hate to start twisting it. I don't want to screw the end of the threads up. But yeah, the longer bolt's causing a little bit of an issue. Let me see. There, I gave it a little tappy. There we go. There we go. I found that this type of 10 millimeter socket doesn't fit in there good at all. Luckily I did just buy these so you can kind of use them at an angle. These things are perfect 
for the way these bolts go in. So if you have to buy some of these, I would definitely get the ones that you can use on an angle like this. All right, let's go ahead and tighten it up. There we go. All right, before I put the skid plate back on, I'm just gonna clean it up a bit. It's a messy one, of course. Main reason I'm cleaning it up for a thumbnail picture, but it's also good to, you know, clean underneath it when you can. All right, I'm just gonna clean up the skid plate while I have it off here. Before I put it back on. Hopefully the skid plate goes on without needing to trim anything, but we'll see. All right, I'm gonna throw the skid plate back on. You can kind of get a visual of what this plate looks like on the bottom. That looks a lot stronger. Uh, I did buy the raised car design full gusset kit and they have a weld in brace for here. I would have bought that, but this one has the hole locations and I thought this Weller kit would be a lot easier to align if my frame was a little tweaked, which luckily I found out it wasn't. So yeah, this is gonna work out good anyway. All right, let's throw this up here. Okay, so these got to kind of weave so it goes in there just like that try not to over tighten these bolts I've heard that they can snap off pretty easily they're pretty brittle bolts so I just snugged it down a little bit. All right, now I'll throw these bolts in. Make sure you have the bolts with this little shoulder on it. Yeah, so it looks like the holes don't line up as well, but you can definitely push it so they do line up. So I don't think we're gonna have to do any cutting. So that's good. Just takes a little pressure. There we go. All right, the brackets all the way installed and the skid plate went right back on. It does drop the skid plate a tiny little bit, but yeah, it looks really good. Hopefully that's a lot stronger. I feel a lot more comfortable knowing I have the brace on. I've read a lot on the forums about this being a, a big issue. So yeah, cool. That was really easy. There we go. All right, now I'm pretty confident that the frame is completely straight. I don't think we have anything tweaked. It's good to go. Ready to hit the trails. Um, I do have to change the oil. I'm going to clean out the air filters and all that since it had been upside down. I haven't done that. I did notice a little bit of antifreeze on the skid plate when I took it off, but that might have been from the rollover. I don't know. I'll keep an eye on that. But yeah, that was super easy. That's it for the install. It was such an easy install. I mean, Grinding out those uh, gussets were about the worst part of it and I think it took longer for the paint to dry in this cold weather than it did for the entire install even videoing I mean it was super quick and The way I installed this I wanted to make sure that I did it 
with as little work as possible. I plan to take out the diff and axles and all that stuff because that's what I've seen people do installing this brace. And I was like, man, that seems like a lot of work for someone to dive into. But I mean, all I did was take the skid plate off, take the bolts out, grind, and then put the brace in place. I mean, you didn't have to unbolt the shocks, the diff, axles, nothing. I mean, it's so easy. And I wish I would have done it a long time ago on my original YXZ. I mean, it's such cheap insurance to strengthen your frame when that's a known, you know, area that gets bent. And it was just, I feel a lot more comfortable now that I have the brace in. I feel like it's not gonna bend and it's a, it's a good feeling. Uh, if you wanted to know the price of this brace, I paid $111 for it which is fairly cheap. The brace was $92 and then the shipping and tax got it up to $111. So, I mean, as cheap as this is, there's really no reason not to do it. I didn't want to do it on my original YXZ because I'm like, oh, you got to grind and touch up the frame. I mean, it's it's very minimal touch up and if you paint or tape off just those little tiny areas, I mean, no one would ever notice. And it does suck grinding on a brand new frame I know that, but I mean, this thing is so strong that it's so thick of metal and it's just so easy. Hopefully this video helped you out. If you did like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. You know, subscribing, liking, even commenting and sharing the videos helps us out immensely. It tells YouTube that they're decent videos and uh, they might be helpful for other people and it just helps build the channel. We're finally getting quite a few subscribers now and we're monetized, not making much money at all, honestly. But I mean, the more we get subscribers and likes and views mainly, uh, the more money we'll get, the more parts we can buy. So I mean, those things really help us out and we appreciate every subscriber and viewer. Uh, if you haven't seen any of our videos before, uh, check out our catalog of videos. We have a lot of modification videos, riding videos, uh, tips and tricks, just uh, pretty much whatever we're doing on the weekends. We have side-by-sides, uh, snowmobiles, quads. I mean, I have an amphibious coot. Just kind of whatever we're doing off-roading on the weekends. That's what we're recording and, of course, working on them. Uh, recently, we just made a reaction video. That video was a lot of fun to film. And it was a pretty entertaining video, so check that one out. But I really appreciate you watching. Uh, have a great day.